hjem længs en tag mit hjerte i sin varme hånd. Sød med fuld her min smerte kvæt i savnet hånd. Og når det så bliver aften, går jeg til hjemmeegnen hen. Just som den gang jeg traf den, fylder glæden mit sind. Er du træt, trist og tvær, rejs mod dem, som du har kær. Der skal vor kolde hjerter varme si hjem hegnen skær.
But war did come. Only a few months later, on April 9th, 1940, German forces crossed the Danish border. In towns like ours, German only a generation before, the occupiers were received warmly, and other towns with hostility. Within two hours, the government capitulated. Within four, the fighting stopped. The king gave a speech, urging calm and cooperation to avoid needless bloodshed. Most of us listened. For years, life moved along normally, if a bit uncertain. And some of us delayed our lives, waiting for the war to end. Only a few upstarts, mostly communists and young students, made trouble for the Germans with limited public support. But then, in 1943, the winds of war blew in from the east, and German supremacy no longer seemed assured. Then more Danes began to rise up, and the occupation became more violent. The Germans disbanded the Danish military, took over our police, and began shooting those who rose against them. Neither side had clean hands. The resistance executed informants, snitches and collaborators. Danes fought against Danes. Even in our little rural hamlet, the soldiers came. The Gestapo came. The war bared its bloody fangs. Abroad, German lines were collapsing, their forces folding under Allied advance. But our town was a powder keg ready to explode. We knew the war would be over soon. We only had to keep our heads down a little longer.
When the war came to Denmark, we were not forced out of our homes, and soldiers did not point their guns at us, but scarcity made itself known. Our lives became more muted, and our indulgences became more and more modest, until a pinch of sugar became a luxury. Still, we had a livelihood, and the simple pleasures of life remained to us, perhaps painted stronger than ever before. I couldn't bring myself to care about the wider war. I only wanted to keep my head down until it was over. That was the safest path. I'm a little earlier than usual, but I'm sure the doctor won't mind. There are always patients who come knocking as soon as the cock crows.
For all the talk of war and all the soldiers parading through the streets, it had been a long time since we felt the bloody sting of violence in our little tingler. Most days at the clinic consisted of the odd fever, a bout of indigestion, or perhaps a sprained wrist from a child playing in the snow. This was the first time I had ever treated someone for a violent ban, and a soldier at that. I hoped it would be the last. How many more people would have to suffer before this war was finally over? I need a few things from the market.
Before the war began, even the markets in Little Tinglev were filled with gadgets from abroad, strange and wonderful fruits, and all manner of comforts which we took for granted. And then, in a flash, we entered an era of scarcity, and the luxuries vanished. Tinglev's market hung on by a thread, 
and the weekly shopping became an exercise in strained optimism and bursts of culinary improvisation. If I wanted to obtain the occasional luxury, I had to make some moral compromises. It was a price I was... The windows are shining like beacons in the darkness. Did Anders forget...
And the peaceful life that Anders and I had strived It was smart of Anders to hide the papers in the chicken coop. The smell alone was enough to put anyone off a detailed investigation. Criminal Inspector Stahl wants to ask me some questions.
They put on friendly faces. They smile at you when you walk down the street. They hold doors open and make space under their umbrellas. But behind it all, there's a quiet menace. All their niceties mask a sinister motive. Their eyes cannot help but scan and study you. They look for weaknesses which can be exploited. And you shiver under the gaze of the Gestapo, no matter what promises they make. If they thought themselves the only ones capable of affecting civility and hiding behind a fake smile, then they were sorely mistaken.
In his letter, Anders mentioned that he was taking care of some ducklings near the...
So tired. It seemed that Anders had kept many secrets from me, but this one was the easiest to forgive. According to Anders, this is where the sparrow and the others are hiding. I hope I can get some.
When I... It seemed Leva would only trust me once I offered her some help. Apparently it didn't matter that my husband had been one of her closest confidants. Stahl told me I might be...
इधर At least the Gestapo still needed something from him, and maybe from me. As long as that remained the case, he would survive. The pasta is bringing S.
It only seemed fair that Mida should receive some payment for the risk she was taking in hiding so many people. I can't believe I'm betraying the doctor like this. But if I'm to see Anders again, I'll need to break in and steal the penicillin. There's something up ahead.
For years, the clinic had been a reminder. I needed to remind myself that no matter what happened, I had done this for Anders. The darkness around me feels suffocating, but I'll find... The Gestapo had I could only imagine what it must have been like in that place. I had to continue Anders' mission to save him. He Pastor Jacob will be presiding over the Sunday service. I need to catch him alone and ask him about...
looking. Both Germans and Danes were just trying to live their lives, and I hoped that they could stop their difference. Reinhard has offered to look after Anders if I help him.
They danced around the system, skirting guards. They did what they needed to keep their business going, and I did what I needed to help my husband. At least I did it for the right reasons. The soldiers and workers here might be willing to tell me something about Mr. Vestergaard. What sort of secrets is he hiding?
This factory had come to represent I had scoured the area for clues, but something told me that there was much more to be found here. Resistance could be valuable allies in helping to save Anders. I should see if they need any help.
forefront. The boy was old enough to have chosen his ideology and old enough to be held accountable for it. I need to convince Mr. Vestergaard to help free Anders. If he won't offer it... There's something up ahead.
How strange.
In my attempts to pressure the old profiteer with gossip, I had stooped to his level. Was this the price of fulfilled ambition? My head is spinning, but I have to try and get some rest.
Let's see. A person is the sum of their choices, and I couldn't imagine having made different ones. My father is friends with some of the guards at the factory.
My f He had chosen a vile ideology, and even if he was my father, a person like that could not be trusted. The resistance is keeping Heinrich captive here. The boy's a bit of a sleuth. He might know something about the factory.
The resistance. The information he offered could save lives. His discomfort and pain were surprised. To free Anders, I need to help either the Resistance or Rhino. There's something up ahead.
Some people might get caught in the crossfire, but that was life in wartime. None of us were safe. The streets are crowded with patrols. I told the others to bring the munitions here. We must hide until things quiet down.
We scurried through the night, avoiding German patrols, and found refuge inside the church. It was strange to find myself in that place with these particular companions. For all of their fighting prowess, they were just as vulnerable as me in this moment, shivering against the cold stone of our sanctuary. I could barely imagine how the countless refuge My heart ached for Esther. How long had she and Sophia moved from haven to haven, never get... Peter will be busy preparing for tonight's mission. I'm sure he wishes to save Anders, but perhaps I need to make sure that we'll...
Wolves can only protect the... We must always try to help stem the bleeding, even if it means getting hurt ourselves. Esther is trying to escape by train towards Sweden.
The war made us lose so much tenderness towards one another. We lost it because of fear. The steam from the train.
And just like that, it all ended. I ran and ran, but running only moves you forward. It cannot change the past. Eventually, a pair of local farmers took me in and hit me from the Nazis. The shock of Anders' death filled my waking hours. I had been so close to saving him. I kept thinking about how we had planned our future together and how our dreams had been snuffed out in an instant. If only I had more time. If I had just done things differently. Could he still be here with me? Months passed, and on the 4th of May, Denmark was liberated from its German occupiers. But the war did not end quietly like I had hoped. There was a maelstrom of activity as Nazi collaborators were put into camps, snitches were executed by the resistance, and others were put on trial for treason. But in time, life began to return to its familiar patterns. I went back home. The house had been searched, though it was otherwise as Anders and I had left it. Once I had cleared away the mess, it almost felt like no time had passed at all, like it was all a bad dream. But in all the nooks and crannies, the ghosts of the past were waiting for me to let down my guard, lest I forgot what happened and who I had lost. I always assumed Leva would return to the big city after the war. But every now and then I see her wandering the streets of Tinglev. After he escaped from the train station, Peter had seemingly vanished into thin air. I often found myself wondering what had happened to him. Until one day, I had Stahl died on that dark winter's night defending a system which was collapsing. Margaret wrote to tell me that Wolfgang returned to Germany in the closing days of the war. My hand shakes as I write these words, unable to contain my sorrow. Esther and Sophia's bodies have been identified at the Neuengamme concentration camp, though details of their deaths are sparse. Last week, the paper said that the Danish border police had arrested a German man for smuggling Robbery and Doc Olga Vestergaard requested a house call today. He was complaining about chest pain. Margaret rarely goes out these days. When she does, people either shun her or spit vile words in her direction. Or I talked to the pastor at church this Sunday. He expressed sadness about fe- following the death of his father. Heinrich and his mother left Tinglev and returned to their hometown in Germany. I saw Charlotte at the market today. She was alone and could barely get the attention of any of the merchants. Even the villagers. I visited the inn last Thursday. Mida was there, standing behind the bar and looking like her usual self. The clinic was boarded up after Harold's death and I was forced to start making house calls on my bus. For years, Papa had advocated the Nazi ideology with its lofty claims of renewed self-respect for our people. In the end, our sleepy little town had been ripped apart by the war, and even my hands, the hands of a nurse, were not...
Bye. 